Hey guys, it's Noe, and uh, I just woke up, and it's like 5.30, yeah, 5.30 a.m., and I just had like the most weirdest dream ever, or I should I say like the most heartbreaking dream you ever had a dream that when you wake up and you still feel the dream? Um, well, that just happened to me. And it was kind of like, um, I don't know, like I would call it like a heartbreaking dream or something like that. I don't know. But um, this dream took place like in my grandma's house. And I was supposed to, or I was given a task, which I know it never happened because I don't remember anything like this. But um, in this dream, I was given a task of taking care of a Christmas tree, which I'm amazing at doing. I love decorating Christmas trees. But this tree was very weird. It kind of looked like a Lego, <laughs> where like the branches were obviously connected to the log and the log had like this kind of like squares you know how like you interlock the Legos the tree you know like the trunk will move or like it will twist or you know I don't know it was very it was very an interesting Christmas tree and, and I knew that uh, someone was coming to to check for the tree later throughout that day or you know I remember like like playing in the garden I remember like seeing a bird I don't know like these things were so real maybe it's like one of those it's not a lucid dream because I think in the lucid dreams you are you know not aware or you're aware that you are dreaming and you're in control of your dreams but I was not in control. I was about 10 or 12. I found out that my oldest uncle, uh, not ankle, <laughs> uncle, it was coming to check on the tree, right? So I was putting up the tree, whatever. Somehow like I was getting some other stuff, you know, in this bag, it was full of, I don't know, like dirt or something. And it spilled all over the floor and I was trying to like I was rushing to clean it up because my uncle was coming and I can see him part coming towards the house and then suddenly we just got like this storm like this water and I remember like the water rushed through the living room and basically clean up all that dirt all the sand and when he walked in, um, he, I was near this wall, like it was full of photos or pictures, whatever. He said, and he was like telling me about all these photos, like who was in the photo and things like that. And while he was talking and he was telling me all these stories on these photos, I remember, you know, me trying to say something, but I couldn't, you know, it's like one of those times where you have like this, this knot on your throat that you cannot speak or you cannot talk. Suddenly, I mean, I don't know, I just woke up and I literally was bawling, I was crying. I was crying and crying so much, I mean, it's been probably like 30 minutes. I woke up and the first thing that came to my mind um, was, I wanted to say, or what I wanted to say, you know, it was help my dad, or why him, I don't, I don't know what was my question to him, but those two things, you know, came to my mind immediately when I woke up, it was, I don't know, it was a weird thing. <laughs> See, I basically, you know, was raised, you know, without a father, uh, for the most part. And not because he's dead, uh, he's still very alive. Oh my God, I keep like crying. <laughs> like, I'm a little girl. <laughs> Just kidding. I was probably like 10, again, or 12, you know. I was around that age where I basically learned something from my dad that I just 
took him out of my mind, you know, for the most part. And maybe I haven't taken him out of my mind because <laughs> obviously I'm crying, right? It's hard. And, and all I can say, you know, it's I want to make it very clear. This is nothing related uh, to me, you know, being gay or anything like that. I've known that, or I had feelings, you know, for boys, you know, since I was a little boy, so way younger than Tan believe me. <laughs> but I think, you know, it, have, it may, me being gay, you know, has made me more like sensitive, you know, to, to things. Obviously have more of my mother because I am more sensitive, even though that in, in certain things I am very, you know, calm and things like that. And I can take a lot before I break. But in many others, I am very sensitive. I am pretty sure I know that. Anyway, so getting back to my story. So I think it was like around 10 or 12 when I think I basically lost my dad. See, he left us or he cheated, you know, um, with this lady, you know, that used to help clean the house. <laughs> Imagine that. This lady, I mean, it was just, I mean, into this point, I'm just like, not that I am not a mean person, and if you know me, I am not a mean person at all. Uh, yes, I have my times, obviously, I have my moments, but I just don't have any respect whatsoever for people that that do these things, you know, that get into a marriage and basically destroy it. My message, I think, you know, with this video is for, if you're a father, if you have kids, if you have a, a son or a daughter, doesn't matter. I think the most important thing for you to do is give him all your love. I mean, honestly. Give him all you have because <sighs> because that kid might be gone. It Okay, fine. Oh, God. Because that kid might be gone before you know it, and you want that that kid, you know, to remember you. You want the kid to love you, and have them be part of your life. I think. See, I don't have any memory whatsoever to like have my dad, you know, like take take me to a ballpark or you know um, just to the park or things like that. <laughs> The memories I have of him, things like uh, him teaching me how to drive. I mean, I give him that. He teach me how to drive, but it was a tough one. It was a tough way to show someone how to drive. I think if 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 a father does that here in the U.S., it will be bad. That father will be in jail. You know, because every mistake and I, I learn in a manual or a stick, whatever you call it. But uh, every time that I, if I made a mistake, you know, it was a punch or a hit on the head uh, or a slap or something, you know, that I was not doing what he wanted me to do. I don't know, it's just like the male presence of a father, it was never there. And I think that still haunts me and it hurts me. But you know, what do you do? It's life, right? You just have to move on and be with your life. I just don't know. I mean, this dream was very weird. Why was I trying to tell my uncle or my oldest uncle? He passed away, by the way. Um, may he rest in peace. I just don't understand why I was trying to tell him, you know, to help him, to help my dad or to like put him in line to he was doing something wrong. I saw my dad, you know, I mean, I, with this woman, and every time that I, when I catch him, you know, so to speak, and again, I was about 12 years old, he said, you know, I mean, he was used to scream at me, and he said, you cannot tell your mother. That's something that only maricones do. So that's only what faggots do. 
uh, to tell on their father. So I was, I remember, you know, like the first time that I catch him or doing that, I, I was so emotional. I cried and I, I literally run to my dog. <laughs> it was so funny. I miss that dog. It's, it was such a cute dog. I run to my dog and I just hug him and I remember it crying and crying and crying because I could not process like I didn't understand why he was doing that if he was supposed to be doing like the hugging and the kissing and stuff like that like banking out obviously that way my mother not with this person that used to clean our fucking house shit happens i think i haven't seen my father since i was probably 17 i think 17 i don't know i'm 42 now do your math that's too many numbers for me i've talked to him very like probably last year i didn't talk to him but maybe like he'll call me every other year you know like but it, for me it's just very indifferent very like why are you calling me like th there's really no point of you now apparently he has changed uh, and everything yeah after like that woman left him or whatever but this woman literally destroyed our family like completely the one the, the main one that used to support us was my mom until this point probably I just don't know I mean when I turn 18 I just ran away I just didn't want to know nothing about it I just laugh and say screw this to both of you not only my father you know but to my mother too because why she was being and probably that's another video that I will talk about that and I really don't know why am I doing a video <laughs> talking about this and it's already oh my god it's already 15 minutes and I never said anything probably I have to chop this video a lot but again guys so my message to you if you have or if you are a father if you have children love them Give them anything and everything you have. Oh my god, I think my camera just died. But um, anyway, this video already, it's like super long. I am going to wake up and as usual, first thing that I do when I wake up is drink water. I already drank like that other glass that I have there. And I usually have like two glasses of water when I wake up because I think you're, you are so dehydrated that you need some water. But uh, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna, I don't know. I need to like get this crying out of me. Um, probably do some stretching, some yoga. I love it. I just wish that I was better at it. But you start somewhere, right? There will be one time that I will do a handstand. If I do it now, my arms will break. But anyway, guys, until next time, I love you. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, comment below, whatever. And yeah, love you.